This is my daughter Haley, and uh, that was awesome. It's so good, and I'm telling you, world changers, total world changers uh, are, are coming into our life. So, um, and I know this one. Well, I I kind of birthed her. She's talking to me now, so she pulls rank, but it doesn't work. Yeah. Who says tall girls can't wear heels? Come on. Mom kind of set me up for a testimony for Burning Man, but I prayed into it, and I feel like the testimony that needs to be shared is my, my testimony. Like Heather, I'm a pastor's kid, but I wasn't like Heather in the sense that I got offended and stayed back. I rebelled, and I rebelled hard. But God is so good. Yeah. He really is. Yeah. He left the 99 and went for the one. <laughs> and I did not make it easy for him at all. <laughs> I got offended. I left church. I took off as fast as I could. Religion had put me in a box with standards I couldn't live up to. I was a misfit. I never fit in. But life caught up with me. My body couldn't keep up with my decisions. I became incredibly sick. I began to use vices that weren't my own, that were never designed for me. <sighs> Riddled with arrows <laughs> from words people said from words I said to myself, okay, self-hatred had taken such a deep root, I couldn't look at myself in the mirror anymore because it was a shattered image of something I thought I was. Life kicked me into a dark hole and left me there to die. Nobody could save me. My parents, night and day, prayed for me. The one that came to save me in the darkest pit where there was no light, where I was gasping for air, riddled with arrows, was Jesus. He set me back up on my feet and said, come on, we're going to climb out of this pit together. He didn't carry me. He said, we're going to do this together. And we started our relationship there. That was two years ago. I was 34. <laughs> I'm 36 now. For those who can't tell. <laughs> we started at the bottom of this pit. God, Jesus, my Jesus. <laughs> He's a multitasker. Yes, he is. Because there's a purpose and a call on my life, and Satan could not physically take me out. Amen. He couldn't. Multitasker, as we were crawling out of this pit together, side by side, and believe me, I was like, I don't think I can do this. He's like, yes, you can. I'm right here, step by step by step. Yeah. And every step I took, and believe me, there were some times where I was unstable on my feet. He was pulling out arrows and healing up the spot. Words, out. Suicide, out. Self-hatred, out. Healed. Right? Every step we took, and I realize now the reason he didn't carry me out of that pit is because it was training. He was my trainer. He was training me. You can overcome these things. You can overcome these things. These things do not define you. This is not who you are. Build your relationship with me. See me for who I really am because I have been misrepresented to you and you're afraid of me and that's not who I am at all. So I did. I got to know him. I fell in love with him. I did. And as we're climbing out of this pit, I start to realize, oh, I am great. You know, I am fine. Suicide is not on me. Instead of reaching for a pill bottle, I reached to Jesus. Yeah. I chose my children in Jesus over drugs, yeah. 
That doesn't just happen. That's Jesus on the inside of you when you've lived with vices your whole life. Yeah. I'm saying this because I think there's a lot of mamas out there that are praying for their kids. That are night and day like my parents. I'm one of the lucky ones. Your kids are lucky. Because I come in contact with a lot of kids. And I call them kids, but they're my age and younger. That don't have the mamas and the daddies praying for them. And it is a scary, scary place to be in when you don't know. And when I walk into the world, because what we do in outreach, I live in my everyday life. I walk into the grocery store like a flare, right? Because it burns, it shines out of me. People come, they tell me their stories, and I'm able to reach into their life. But I want you to know that your prayers do not go unanswered. Don't stop praying. Don't. And if you know someone who's in the pit, they're going to be okay. Keep praying for them. Praise God. My mom also wanted me to share one more thing. And this is a very amazing thing. And it's also an intimate side. One day, a few months ago, it was a really tough day for me. I'm a single mom. I had my kids, man, we're just trucking through the day, you know, one foot in front of the other. <clears throat> and it was just the week had gotten to me. It was just one thing, and just batting balls. I felt like I was in a batting cage, just, oh, you know? And I crumpled into my dad's office chair, and I started crying, like hard, big tears. And I said, I just want to go to heaven. I, I, I don't, I'm so tired. I'm really tired that night, or the next day, that night. I got really tired at 8.30, and I was like, I need to go lay down. My mom, my mom and dad's room is kitty corner from my room, and I went and I laid down, and instantly I was in heaven. You heard me. I was in heaven, and my mom and dad didn't know what I had been praying like, what am I supposed to do with this that's burning on the inside of me? I don't know what to do. I was in heaven. And I was looking out over a field that was all the colors of the sunset. Every color of the most brilliant sunset you could see was this field that spanned like this. And I was looking at this field and I was, what, what is going on here? And I looked behind me, there was a projected image. It was, he was there but not there, my son's best friend. I was like, that kid's here with me. She's following me everywhere. <laughs> All of a sudden, Jesus appeared. He did. He appeared. And his face and his body were blurry. Like I had had my contacts out. <clears throat> he called me by my name. Haley. Yes. He said, and his, stuck his arm out like this. And he said, consider your field and buy it. And I looked down, and his arm was high definition. I could see where the nail had gone in and where it had torn with his body weight. And it was right here, actually. And in that moment, my heart was like, I could identify medically trained. I could identify muscles, tendons, everything. That's how high definition it was. I could see right through it. And I, I looked at him, and instead of asking any questions about myself, I said, oh my god, you're owie. How can I fix it? And I began to cry. And I wanted to fix his owie. And then he said it again. Consider your field and buy it. And then I came back. And I didn't know this, but I was yelling the entire thing out, and she was in her room. (laughs) I'm in heaven. (laughs) Jesus is here. What do you mean, my field? (laughs) And she heard the whole thing. (laughs) She thought I was back on drugs. (laughs) I wasn't. It was Jesus. (laughs) 